Out is brought to you by L&M. L&M unlocks a new world of fresh smoking pleasure every time you light up. And now, our host, Rual Dahl. How are you? I have here a letter from Mrs. B of Long Island, which will be of great interest to all members of the Married Woman's Union. Dear Sir, it says, some time ago, in order to get rid of the rats on my premises, I concocted a rat poison in my own kitchen. But so as to make quite sure that it was effective, I decided to try it on my husband first. If it'll work on him, I thought, then it'll sure as heck work on the rat. Well, sir, it worked on both. And I should now like to pass on the recipe for the benefit of any lady in your audience who may have a rat in the house. Half a pound of chicken livers, quarter of a pound of mushrooms, the juice of a porcupine, and one third stool of the species Amanita phylloides, or the death cap. Cook well and mash into a delicious pate. Yours truly, etc. P.S. The death cap is a very pretty little toadstool with a greenish yellow top and there are plenty of them in the woods. Thank you so much, Mrs. B of Long Island. And now, before you all go running up to the woods with your baskets, I strongly recommend that you watch tonight's play by Jerome Ross. It's called 2020, and it's way out. Start fresh, start fresh, With L&M. Stay fresh with L&M. Unlock a whole new world of fresh smoking pleasure. Start fresh, stay fresh with L&M. The touch of a light to an L&M. You unlock a whole new world of fresh smoking pleasure. Do away with dried out taste for good. The secret, flavor seal. L&M's special way of moisturizing tobacco to seal in natural tobacco freshness and flavor. L&M burns slower, smokes cooler. And L&M's modern miracle tip means you get the cleanest, freshest taste possible. Unlock a whole new world of fresh smoking pleasure. Start fresh, stay fresh with L&M. Unlock a whole new world of fresh smoking pleasure. Fresh tasting, best tasting L&M in pack or box. Somebody come in. Yes, sir. What can we do for you? Some beloved pet, perhaps, you'd like to have stuff? Uh, my name is Cartwright, Hervey Cartwright. I'm a salesman for the Anthropological Publishing Company. The what company? I believe you wrote us about the free trial offer on our new encyclopedia. Now, this oh, wrote want? you? We never wrote you. What would we want with an encyclopedia in a place like this? But this is, sir. Uh, uh, 8174 2nd Street, isn't it? Yes. Well, that's what I've got written down here. <laughs> well, I guess I copied it wrong in the office. Guess you did. It's these darn glasses, I bet. New reading glasses. I've only had them a few days, and I'm not used to them yet. I've been making all kinds of mistakes with them. <laughs> did you hear that, Miss Hatman? The gentleman came all the way out here by mistake. He has new reading glasses and he can't see with them. 
She's talking to a stuffed snake? Well, they're thick as thieves, my wife and Mahatma. What? It's moving. It's alive. Very much alive. Aren't you, Precious? Isn't he a beauty? He's an Indian viper. Comes all the way from India. Oh, but how, how is it he's alive? Well, why shouldn't he be alive? We don't stuff everything. We keep one or two of them as special pets. But aren't vipers sort of dangerous? I, I, as pets, I mean. He asked if you're dangerous, dear. Mr. Cartwright, if Mahatma were to rear up out of that tank and bite you, You'd swell up like a balloon. In half an hour, you'd be dead. We've seen it happen. <laughs> Look, with heavens, what's that? Mongoose. That's Bessie. Oh, we love Bessie. We felt awful when she passed away. You kept her as a pet, too? But they're deadly, too, aren't they? Uh, uh, mongooses or uh, uh, mongoose? Oh, yes, quite. Oh, I've got to go. Oh, don't hurry. This has been very pleasant. I had no idea. It was this late. It's almost 5 o'clock. 5.30. Well, this is ridiculous. These glasses are supposed to give me 20-20 vision. You can't trust anything nowadays. You can't trust any human beings, dear. Well, it's... Nice meeting you folks. Oh, no, don't go. Long as you came all the way out here, maybe we can make it up to you. Now, these books that you're selling... Mm -hmm. Oh, terrific offer. Ten volumes. The new anthropological encyclopedia. If you buy on time... Anthropological? Only... Yes, sir. That means pertaining to man, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Complete accounts of prehistoric man, ancient man, medieval no, man... I'm sorry. We wouldn't be interested. My wife means we don't happen to care very much for the human race. Animals, yes, but not people. Animals are the only ones worth preserving. Yes, well, I see what you mean. Hello, Bobby Bill, don't climb a tree! Oh, good heavens, that bird, he just talked to me. Well, why not? He's a talking minor bird. That's our other pet. Major, this is Mr. Cartwright. Don't climb a tree! Don't climb a tree! <laughs> He's Major. The minor. Get it? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, forgive me. Uh, but I do think you folks ought to be more careful. I mean, it's risky having uh, a viper loose uh, when people come in. Oh, bless you. People never come in here. What? I said people never come here. We're alone, usually. Just us and the animals. Oh, dear. I suppose you got caught in that rain today. Yes, dear, I did. I went way out to the other end of four years old, and the only job you're capable of is peddling books in the rain. Stephanie, I had quite an adventure. There was this did funny shop... Did you talk shop. to Mr. Huddleston about the rains? No, he wasn't in a very good mood this morning, so I... He'll never be in the right mood for you. Stanley used to say there was a certain type of office drudge that nobody treated with respect. Your first husband said lots of things you keep quoting and quoting and quoting. At least he had enough gumption not to put up a boss who treated him like dirt, paid him in peanuts, and then sent him out in the rain. Well, these glasses are ridiculous. I can't see a thing. Now listen to what happened to me with them today. It was the, I always found Stanley's reading glasses very helpful. Yes, dear. I don't doubt it. You know what, Stephanie? I met this couple today, taxidermists. They say they like animals better than people. Now don't open the window when you go to bed, or you'll keep me awake all night with your coughing and sneezing. Cartwright! 
I've got something to say to you. Oh, good morning, Mr. Huddleston. Can't you do I'm anything talking. properly? Look at this inventory list. Look at it. Take a look at it. You've copied everything wrong. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Huddleston. I'm having trouble with the new glasses. You always have an alibi for your incompetence, don't you, Cartwright? Cartwright! Mr. Cartwright, well, it's nice to see you again. This is simply amazing. I was sitting in my office, I put on these glasses, and all of a sudden, boom. Don't worry, dear, we're delighted to have you back. Well, I want to tell you folks something, it's nice to be back. Oh, I've, I've fought at this place. It's so quiet, no people. I guess that's the main thing I like. What you said about just the animals and no people. <laughs> Hello, Mahatma. Hi, Bessie. Oh. How are you, Major? Don't climb a tree, Barbara. Don't climb a tree. <laughs> oh, you folks are right. They are easier to get on with in many ways. In all ways. Let him stay a while. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't right now. Did you hear what I said, Cartwright? You always have an alibi for your incompetence, don't you? Oh, go climb a tree, Flubbermouth! What? Oh, Mr. Huddleston, I didn't mean that. It just slipped out. But you're always riding me. You're perfectly right. I did lose my temper, Cartwright, and I apologize. today. I doubt that very I much. I spoke up. I told Mr. Huddleston a thing or two. He gave you the raise. No, we didn't get around to that, but I, I don't told... want to hear about it. I'm ordering two weeping willows. Your what? For Stanley's mausoleum. I'm going to have those two little blue spruce trees move to the back. And on Sunday, we'll drive out to the cemetery and see how it looks. Stephanie. I have one day off a week. Why do I have to keep spending it visiting Stanley's grave? You ought to feel honored, sanctified. Oh, I realize I'm not worth the ground Stanley's buried in, but this is going too far. Oh, you're telling me. I bet there isn't a single soul living in Irvington, New Jersey, who hasn't wondered why I waste my life on such an amoeba. Well, I must have been an amoeba when you trapped me into proposing to you. What a fool I was. I thought I was lonely. I'll think twice about it the next time. The next time? No, that's the dreadful part. It's always the measly little unhealthy runts that live forever. Here, put this in the mailbox. Only one M in cemetery. Once more, Mahatma. Now don't wriggle around, it spoils your aim. He's out of practice. Poor Mahatma hasn't been out on a mission in ever so long. A mission? What kind of mission? You don't look very cheerful today, Mr. Cartwright. Would you if your wife kept belittling you and ridiculing you and practically wished you were dead? I can't stand much more of it. Should we tell him? I think we ought to. We have a little society, a little organization, SEP, the Society for the Eradication of People. But when they were alive, when they were alive, they were all members, especially the man-eating varieties. Now Mahatma and Major are our only members. You've heard of the law of the jungle? 
survival of the fittest and all that? Oh, yes, as a matter of fact, in the encyclopedia that I'm selling. Well, we don't see why they shouldn't apply that law outside the jungle. So we act as their agent. We handle their bookings for them. It, uh, there's a small fee, naturally, but you'll find it worth it. No slip-ups, satisfaction guaranteed. Oh, I don't quite follow. Well, Bessie eradicated, oh, probably a dozen people before she passed away. So did Teddy, the tarantula. And now there's my hat, my special service, day or night, Mr. Cartwright. Think it over, Mr. Cartwright. I am speaking to you. What are you sitting there for like a dummy? Stephanie, dear. I've heard of an organization that provides the most remarkable service. If you're looking for fine tobacco, if you're looking for flavor too, if you're looking for fresher smoking, well, brother, we're telling you, from the first cigarette in the morning to the last cigarette at night, what you want is an L and M, it's sure to treat you right. Smoke after smoke, your taste stays fresh. L&M's fine tobaccos always taste better. They're fresher when you smoke them, never drying to your taste. The secret? L&M tobaccos are moisturized, a special way called flavor seal, to seal in freshness and flavor. Start fresh any time of day with L&M, that's what I say. Stay fresh day after day with L&M, that's the way I unlock the whole new world. I want it bingo tonight. It was getting late. I was thinking you were having trouble with the car. Do you remember what day this is, dear? Do you? Happy anniversary. I'm glad you had sense enough to put them in water. If you haven't finished all the coffee, I'm going to have some. Should I bring you a cup? Stanley used to send me long stemmed roses. You're not married to Stanley now. You're married to me, and I think these flowers I brought you are very nice, so there. All during the war, wherever he was stationed, he managed to send me long-stemmed roses. There's your coffee. Even during the war, even in the midst of all that destruction and carnage, he found time to send me flowers. What destruction? What carnage? The war, stupid. World War II. Stanley was stationed in Philadelphia for the duration in the Quartermaster Corps. Oh, dare you belittle him. I'm just stating facts. Compared to you, he was a hero. You couldn't even get into the army. Oh, Stanley. Oh, Stanley. Stephanie! I'm alive and he's dead. I wish it was the other way around. Oh, I could kick myself from here to the moon. I'm nobody to blame but myself. At first, I was resigned to being a widow. I even looked forward to it, in a way, to that sense of independence. But no, no, yours truly didn't know when she was well off. I missed having a man around. So, so look what I got. Oh, you fought with him plenty when he was alive, from what I've heard. I did. Where did you hear that? These things get around. All I can say is, no matter where he is, I'd a thousand times rather be with him than with you. You mean that? Certainly I mean that. You know, that's interesting, Stephanie. That's really very interesting.
Oh, you've come back, Mr. Cartwright. Did you people mean what you said last time I was here? About sending my hat my out on assignment? Yes. Any special person you have in mind, Mr. Cartwright? My wife. It's getting beyond endurance. She'll be better off, and so will I. Don't bother to explain. We'll be delighted to take care of it, and Mahatma will get rid of her for you. You see, with this population explosion going on, we feel every little bit in the opposite direction helps. Well, uh, what's the usual procedure? Does it cost very much? Well, a viper job costs most, but it's worth it. Mahatma is worth every penny we charge. He does it, you see, when the person concerned is in bed fast asleep. It's painless? Well, it'll be over in two minutes. Well, I guess it's a deal. Good. Oh, by the way, there's a small down payment. Well, I have a credit card. Cash, please. Will $50 be enough? Oh, yes, that'll be ample. I'm sorry we can't give you a free trial offer, but you understand it's not like with your encyclopedias. Oh, naturally not. Uh, do you want that done tonight? Yes, if it's convenient. Perfectly. We don't have anything else scheduled. Mm -mm. Uh, we usually suggest about 3 a.m. Unless Mrs. Cartwright's an insomniac. Well, no, she sleeps like a log. She'll be dead to the world by then. Uh, we sleep in separate bedrooms. Oh, well, that's fine. Makes it easier for Mahatma. Now, just set your alarm about 3.15, and then by the time you go to her, it'll be all over. Well, maybe I'd better bring her a nice, warm glass of milk before she goes to bed. Oh, I think that would be very sweet, dear. Good. Well, it's all settled then. You're practically a widower. It looks like it, doesn't it? Goodbye, Mahatma. And bon appetit. Oh, I forgot. If you list this as a contribution to our society, it's tax deductible. with you. You have the silliest grin on your face. Oh, nothing, dear. Stephanie, would you like a nice warm glass of milk before you go to bed? Yes, that might be nice. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Harry, what did you do to Stanley? Oh, oh, you beast, you termite, you... Take off my glasses, you're wearing my glasses! Well? Well, what? Oh, I thought you told me these glasses were too strong for you. They are. Huh. I'm going to bed. Pleasant dreams, Stephanie, dear. doing up at this hour? You'll be surprised, Herbie. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. My glass. Give me my glasses! I don't care what he's paying you. I'll pay you double. Business is business, dear. Yes, I know, dear, but is it ethical? Yes. I only hope Mahatma does as good a job on Herbie as Bessie did on Stanley. Don't fret, dear. We've never had a victim return.
Did you know that eyeglasses were originally invented by a man called Cornelius Romberg as far back as 1424? And that the lenses in Romberg's glasses were made out of the bottoms of wine bottles? When he looked through them, everything became tremendously blurred. And because of this, he always made a point of putting them on when Mrs. Romberg came into the room. In the end, of course, the good wife evened things up by pouring a little carbolic acid into Mr. Romberg's eye drops. The whole story is fraught with romance. Good night and sleep well. Makeup created by Dick Smith. Hairstyles by Ernest Adler. This is Rod Serling, your guide for a unique odyssey in the Twilight Zone, next on most of these stations. program was pre-recorded. Paul Tremaine speaking. Way Out is brought to you by L&M. L&M unlocks a new world of fresh smoking pleasure every time you light up. one knows what a child will do. He'll dart unexpectedly from between parked cars. He's not as aware of traffic laws as the adult driver should be. Children need extra protection, an extra margin of safety. Highway fatalities are the most senseless in the world. They are not due to sickness or old age, and no one is immune to this form of death. But the toll can be reduced. Where traffic laws are obeyed, deaths go down. So as you take to the highways, remember your responsibility to yourself, your passengers, and to other motorists. Help save a life by obeying traffic laws. <laughs>